I don't see no birds bathing. Some nasty birds, man. Good afternoon, YouTube. Uh, a little late today, but today I had dialysis, so it's one of those days. And I've been doing a lot of thinking. So last night I went to the Okeechobee Steakhouse for the first time ever. And I've been living in West Palm since I was eight years old, since 1990. And I've never walked into that place. And I'm glad I did. Uh, it was amazing. Expensive, but amazing. And I've been doing a lot of thinking because um, if you've been following my channel, I don't know if you, you might know that I I grew up vegetarian by means of my religious practice. And also, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, the uh, how he gave man every herb yielding seed uh, for meat or herb, herb yielding fruit as meat. So we're supposed to originally supposed to be fruit fruitarian. And it's just blowing my mind because I'm starting to see how, how inefficient the nutrients are in fruit. And so there's a few things. Uh, I realized that the diet that he prescribed for man was before the fall and after the fall things went awry i'm inclined to believe that man started eating meat as soon as the fall happened remember when god had to slay a lamb to make clothes for adam and eve and he doesn't believe in waste so i'm sure he basically had them eat that lamb and i believe that they did sacrifices kind of like you know from that point on because he had made the promise in Genesis 3 about, you know, the, the offspring and, and all this other stuff. <clears throat> and I believe a lot of the... Uh, I believe a lot of the Mosaic laws were just things that were repeated to uh, people who already knew these things. You know, I'll give you an example... In the Ten Commandments, it says, remember the Sabbath day. Like, how are you going to remember something if I told you it for the first time? You know, it just, it's like, remember, like, I gave you this gift. And he gave Adam the gift of the Sabbath, you know, for the first day. So I think the world was very different after the fall and even more so different after the flood. And the, so the fruits that we're eating now are nothing like what we were getting um, you know, back then. <clears throat> so it makes sense now. That's the only way I can wrap my head around uh, meat being a, like a, a, the primary source of nutrition. After having eaten vegetarian almost my whole life, never liking it. I never liked <clears throat> being vegetarian. I I did not like it. It was very... It was very uh, conflicting, not conflicting, but what is it? I felt like an outcast, like everybody else is able to eat meat, but I was sitting there eating this veggie crap. I hated it. And um, a lot of times when I would see like my mom or my mom's friends cooking or my dad's friends cooking, I'd be like, man, I really wish I could try some of that, you know, some of that chicken or some of that beef. And, but no, it was, that wasn't the case. And then I guess I've just kind of like been traumatized with uh, eating meat until I started seeing what it's done for my health. Which brings me to my next point. I have reservations on pork because uh, um, I don't eat kosher, but I, I'm not accustomed to eating pork and I feel real guilty when I eat pork or any kind of shellfish. And it's just there's just so much guilt, but I'm eating and I feel so good. Like I like like it's way better than the way I would feel if I ate like quinoa, which was shooting my sugar up, grapes shoot my sugar up. And it, it just doesn't make any sense. Like I'm I'm just kinda like my mind is kinda blown. Because 
you know, the science just points to meat as like the best form of nutrition on this planet for my body. And it really started when I was convinced because I used to eat beef and kind of like feel guilty. It's like, I know I'm doing wrong because I'm eating beef. And it's not it's not good to have that guilt because you build resentment. But it wasn't until this doctor of Korean medicine told me that my body, according to the way my body is, I'm supposed to be eating meat, like me specifically. I met this guy in LA, he was a doctor of Korean medicine, and he looked at my blood under a microscope and he like did some kind of assessment with my body. And he told me that, that there are like eight different body types according to his pathology. And uh, the pathology type or the, the body type that I am, I forgot the name of it, but essentially beef is like the best meat I can eat. And there were, there were all kinds of, of animals, uh, of, of meat that, that is good for me. And beef was like the number one thing. Beef and potatoes were like the number one things that, that were just meant for me completely. And it just like, just threw me for a loop. I'm like, wow, that's, that's crazy. You know, so, um, and before that I was a vegan. So that day I went to Trader Joe's, bought a steak, ate it, and I felt incredible. Anytime I eat beef, I feel like I'm like floating. You know, I, I, it's like a, it's like medicine for me. And yeah, uh, it's gotten so much to the point where I have a friend who was trying to help me uh, get healthy, and he totally believed in this vegetarian lifestyle. He's like, you know, you should go ahead and get some quinoa. I'm like, dude, what are you, what are you talking about, man? Like, that's just a bowl of sugar. Quinoa is the worst thing for any diabetic to eat. Don't ever tell any diabetic to eat quinoa. He said, get your protein, but you don't, but what, what trips me out is that like, you know, I, I, I realized that, you know, he was looking out for my good, but just, just hugely mistaken. You know, it's like you, you're not diabetic. You don't know what it's like to, to eat some kind of grain and to immediately, you know, get a sugar spike or just feel like garbage after it. And, and I'm telling you right now, a vegetarian diet is completely inadequate. And it's not meant for human consumption. This stuff is literally for the animals. For the, the food, vegetarianism or vegetarian foods are for the food we're supposed to be eating. And you know, eat what you want. I'm not one of those guys that, that try to, you know, make somebody eat a certain way. I'll, you know, uh, I used to be like that when I was a vegan, and I know that there are people in different lifestyles who do that. I'm sure there are like carnivore people that do that too, probably. But I, I just, I, I said I'm not. I'm going to stop doing that. You know, people need to eat what they want to eat, and then, you know, when, if they decide to, you know, <clears throat> come to the light, they can come to the light. I really came to notice the carnivore diet when my buddy who my, my he was my neighbor he, he he saw that I was eating a lot of meat like I had a, a heavy red diet uh, mm. I had a heavy red meat diet and he was like dude you should go carnivore with me and I'm like what is what, what, what are you talking about he's like just eat meat just meat and water I'm like dude are you out of your mind what do I look like just eating meat and water? He's like, bro, I'm telling you, you're super healthy. I was like, yeah, and I'm going to be backed up. He's like, dude, it doesn't, like, you digest it all. Because I was under the notion that red, eating red meat would get lodged in your intestine and you had to eat fiber to help push it through, which is a complete lie. Your body absorbs the meat. I can't even tell how many times I heard that lie. Every time, you know, I, I, uh, 
I was talking to another friend of mine, a uh, minister, Adventist minister. He's like, you know, if you're going to eat red meat, make sure you eat salad, you know, so you can push that meat down. I was like, why would I? What, like, like, when you think about it, what sense does it make for me to not digest? Why would you eat something that wouldn't digest? Like, that's why I don't eat fiber. It doesn't digest. It just goes through you. And your, your body can't get any nutrients from it. But if I'm going to eat something that my body fully digested, yeah, I'm going to eat it. This whole idea of us supposed to supposed to like poop three times a, a day, it's it's ridiculous. Eating all the time is ridiculous. We're warriors. That's the way, you know, we we feast and fast. That's the way it happens. You know, you eat and then you go about a few days and you eat again and you eat and you don't do this whole calorie restrict thing and, and all this whole like you know uh eat till i'm 80 percent full that that's ridiculous you eat until you're comfortably stuffed and when you're comfortably stuffed you should be able to do other stuff you know like walk or anything but back in the day when i was eating all those carbs i would just be so uncomfortably stuffed i would probably sometimes just go to bed like man, I'm just so tired, you know, and and it was just like the worst thing. I get this this carb crash. If you're a vegetarian, you eat carbs. There's no way around it. There's nothing else for you to eat. You're eating carbs, and carbs are not essential. They're not. There's no thing as an essential carbohydrate. The the nutrients that are essential are fat and protein, and that's what you get from animal animal foods. And so, yeah, I'm pretty sold. I think the only thing that would probably make me go back is the addiction, which I'm I'm doing better with. Uh, you know, I struggle with sugar. You uh, know, lemonade to name to name a few. And I just hope that I can find a way to keep myself satiated and stay on the right kinds of foods. And start, you know, eating carnivore bars and, and you know, make sure that, that I don't fall off the wagon. And if you're going to do this, just know that it takes patience. Patience, consistency. Don't look at the scale. The scale is not something to look at. Look at your body. Look at the results. Like, look at me. This shirt here fits way better way better than than it did like three weeks ago and that that's that's proof for me i'm not even worried about the scale I'm like you know what I, I i'll check that out later and when i get back to because you know i'm out of town so when i get back to um, atlanta i'm gonna start going back to the gym again so buffalo wild ones is running special where they're doing uh buy one get one so i ordered 15 wings so i'm getting 30 wings uh I hadn't planned on eating 30 wings. I might not go for it, just take them home, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. Cause you saw, cause you saw how I went crazy on the, that, that steak last night. I had that 28, almost a 30 ounce steak, and then lobster tail on top of that. So we'll see. So, um, I, so there are some carnivore approved uh, things here. They have the dry rubs. I believe it's salt and vinegar. Lemon pepper, like no, no added sugar to those. And I guess the lemon. I mean, I guess it would be sugar, but it's it's uh, it's, it's the rind, and it's more of a like, tangy thing. Anyways, and then uh, they have some sauces that are also sugar free, so they're they're pretty carnival. But I would say go to the website, and I think what I'm gonna do now is download the app. I just want to say that we just came from Buffalo Wild Wings. I couldn't finish the wings, but our server, like she's on training, this chick was 